Hello, Michael Mann, Bike Social. Welcome to, well, look, no prizes for guessing where we are. It's Norton Motorcycles. It's the new home, this state-of-the-art 75,000 square feet facility here in the West Midlands. And in this video, you and I are going to go for a behind-the-scenes, bit of an exclusive tour around the production facility here, production and manufacturing facility. Then we're going to talk to the new boss, the new Norton CEO. He is Dr. Robert Henschel. Come with me. This is uh, the reception at the new Norton Motorcycles facility here in Sully Hill, and uh, we're about to start the factory tour, behind the scenes tour, which I think is going to be available for uh, customers uh, in the near future, but not just yet. This is just to show you um, the kind of maintenance area. We come in a second to the quality process of inspection of parts, yeah, of, um, of creating the motorcycle, and you will be convinced when we come back here that we've done our best to get, um, to get quality in our products. Um, so this is our inspection lab. Um, it's a state of the art facility. We're just in the process of uh, getting all of our parts through at the moment so that we can ensure product quality from start to finish. So this is as received from the supplier. Um, from a quality perspective, we vet our supply base and then we control parts through the process, which is called NPAP. Um, uh, and we basically go to the point where we've got off-tool, off-process parts that we're happy with. Um, and to, to ensure we've got part and therefore product quality, we've got a, a few bits of kit in here which sort of help us in that process. So if you've got um, a new product or we are validating something that um, we've been designing in-house, we can put a, a built entity on here, which is why the bed is so big. But we can also go down to my new parts, such as that uh, can be assembly there. And these come in from a third party supplier? Yeah, yeah, we don't, so, so parts of those are not made in house. Mm -hmm. Certain parts we do make in house, like frames are fabricated in house, um, but they're, they're brought in through a, to a specialist. So we are on that journey now to get to a point where we'll, we'll exceed every other OEM in terms of certification. A very clever bit of kit designed for check, checking cam, crane shafts and cam shafts. Um, so any one of these in Europe at the moment. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you only normally have if you were manufacturing cams. And the beauty of this is we can switch suppliers or we can change cam profiles and we can validate all the parts in-house, which is quicker and more efficient. We can also control the quality of our stock. And when we're doing testing as well, you can do uh, pre and post test validation to, to check for wear and, and uh, load profile changes. So extremely niche, but it demonstrates the level that we're going to. That's another cheap bit of kit. So it's, um, you know, it's just about making sure we can do the best we possibly can. Um, So um, there's obviously dimensional variance that goes into a manufacturing frame that's quite difficult to control. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll be showing jigs and fixtures later which control that process. But as part of validation, Michael scan a huge proportion of our frames to ensure um, accuracy and, and tolerance to bias. There has been some significant investment here, hasn't there? Just in this yeah. one room alone. Yeah, and a lot of thought's gone into making sure that it's, it's laid out properly. We've got a few more bits of kit coming as well, so we're looking at some automation help. So we've got something called a Deltron, uh, which we use a cobot to load, so you can get some of the sort of more intricate parts that take a long time to process. You can best play at four o'clock on, on a Tuesday evening, come back in on Wednesday, and it will done 600 parts for you. So that's the nice plan. I'll give you an overview of the manufacturing, um, the engine builder, and, and then the production line. So starting just off out here, just because it's quieter, before any frame gets welded, we polish all the tube internally. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, it gives us a nice smooth finish on the tube, um, because when we, when we want to polish it to a mirror finish, it's very difficult to do that once the frame's completed mm. and assembled. And secondly, having a nice, clean, smooth tube gives us much better welding results when we're actually welding the sections of the frame together so it gives us much better um, sort of bonding between the two tube sections. Everything we've done here at the facility is part about the customer experience so seeing everything that's going on that's why we've got lots of windows everywhere so everyone can see how we're building bikes how we're building engines and how we're building vehicles so one of the things that we've invested quite heavily in recently is the development of our uh, fabrication frames so what we're building right here and what we're fabricating it is a rear subframe right now. So the welding fixtures are 
have been designed specifically for manual welding and robotic welding. Now at the moment we are focused solely on the craftsmanship element of hand-built frames and that's where we're focusing to go for some time but we have got flexibility should we ever need or wish to change our manufacturing processes. See the QR code here? It provides all the information that anyone's ever likely to need about who uh, polished or welded that particular frame on which machine and how, uh, which um, uh, materials were used. Incredible detail. So once frames are manufactured, we'll bring them over to our check and fixture station, which is so we can rotate the frame all the way around and give us a good view on how it's actually looking in appearance. And if, it's, if there's a defect, it can go back through polishing, or if there's an issue with one of the welds, from a cosmetic point of view, it can then be reworked and go back through the process. Now, one of the other things that we have changed and we've now got internally in the next area is uh, our own internal DT and MDT testing set section so what we can do is we can destructively test any frame and we can do die pen testing on every single frame that we manufacture um, and this just gives us better repeatability on the process so mm -hmm. what we've got is we've got the corresponding cut sections that we've agreed with engineering of what we describe as a weld so these are the most critical welds on a bike so what we will do as part of the process is we will take sectional cuts from all of these points and then going through the process, we will effectively process the material to get it to a point that we can examine it under a microscope. And it enables us to have a look at the penetration of a weld. So we'll take sectional cuts of a frame, get it to a small section, we'll drop it into um, silicon, isn't it? Uh, acrylic. Acrylic yeah. uh, solution. And then it enables us to seal it and then examine it under a microscope to measure the penetration of any of the welds. Now that is destructive testing. So we don't do that in every single frame, of course, but this enables us to one, check on the operators to ensure that we've got consistency moving forward. We'll, do, we'll take samples from every one of the welders on every suite of the parts to ensure that we've got the consistency that we require. This is the engine room where the, well, currently the V4 SV engines are being uh, pieced together, but it's so clean in here. Literally, all the, all the draft, there's no draft in here, all the air has been sucked out and been replaced by a, a, a special kind of air that essentially means there's no corrosion, there's no dust. You can pretty much eat your lunch off the floor in here, it's that clean. And there's a washing machine in here too. Engine room done, let's move on. Everything is open and visual, so when, when a customer comes in, they can experience every aspect of the build from, from welding through to engine building, inspection, and all the way through the process. And when we get to the rolling road, there's a big open window there that you'll be able to see the bike on the rolling road. Everything is, is visual to show that customer journey of a bike being made from start to finish. And that's what we want to demonstrate. So an engine will come out of the engine build room on a stand and we will lift it um, off the, off the the cage onto, onto the build trolley where it sits on a plump and what we've got is we've got these uh, trolleys in one of four stations presently these yellow d-mark sections there's actually seven of them in total across the production line so we've got the flexibility or openness of seven stations at the moment so as our volume needs to increase we can add stations in um, but at the moment we're only operate on four plus a rolling road at station two we'll get it to a point where we can pull the engine cradle out and the bike sits within the suspension of front, front and rear wheels and then we'll start to add on various components as it goes through the process. Then at the third station, we have uh, we do the cool it, we do the coolant and the brake leading. So we're draining the system, pressurising it to ensure that we're getting the repeatable levels that we require. So we take measurements of all the brake fluid that's gone in it, all the coolant, the pressure of the system at the time, and it gives us a valid pass, pass or fail result on that on that particular bike. based on a, a proven uh, dyno system, but it's been adapted slightly to suit our requirements for vehicle. But as mentioned before, one of the things that was key for the facility is to have this visual window that shows everything that's going on on the bike, including a screen on the right hand side, which is an exact mirror of what the rider sees on the dyno. So we're not hiding anything, showing anything different. It is exactly what is being shown. There you are, for 250,000 pounds, you too could have your own dyno or dynamometer check that out they do a front brake test a rear brake test and then sixth gear 75 miles an hour power test uh, and then it's all automated so it will give the 
engineers a printout and it's basically if it's okay or not okay and they they get two opportunities to be okay before they go on to the end of line inspection. So this is pretty much the end of the production line. Uh, this particular SV was a, a pre-production model, so it's, it's, it's kind of been developed specifically for testing. But either way, a customer can come here and can see their bike on the dyno for you know before it goes to end of line inspection. So every bike comes in here once it's been completed through the manufacturing process, and we do a standardised uh, end of line inspection. So starting with the clutch lever and working in a clockwise direction back to the same point, uh, we look for aesthetics. So it's, it's finished product quality and it's about understanding and ensuring that the bike is, is correct in terms of our standards to a set process before we hand it out to the customer. Mm. So if, if the situation arises and we need to conduct any rework, then there's two bays over here where the bike would go for rework and then would be confirmed as okay by the same people who have done inspection. We also have a quality alert system where we feed that issue back to the station that potentially caused the problem or if it was an inspection issue uh, then we can, we can address the root cause. And then the final element is CQPA which is the customer quality perception orbit. Oh, yes. um, I wonder what that's good for. <laughs> yeah. So this is where we pick a finished bike at random and we do 7% of build volume. So a bike is picked from the sales area. So the bikes go into the storage area at the back prior to being shipped. So we'll pick a bike and then that bike is audited both statically and dynamically. It takes just under a day. Um, there's a set road test, which has got high frequency, low frequency inputs. Um, and we also do a static audit in, line, uh, in the eyes of the customer. And then uh, any issues found during that audit are fed back to Robert uh, and the management team. And there's a review to ensure that um, all those issues have been rectified and owners are assigned uh, to the particular problem to ensure we can get a resolution in place. So there we go, we've just seen uh, all the way around through the production line here at, uh, at Norton and the new facility, we've seen the, um, the storage area for all the components that actually came over from the previous version of the brand and uh, Robert's talked about the uh, supply chain, the number of suppliers that were existing beforehand which is over 220 and they've, they've kind of slimmed that down, they've got 30 I think of those 220 that continued um, and it seems to me as though well, they were just talking about starting with like a brand a brand equity deficit so if you're starting a brand brand new you're starting at neutral starting at zero and your intention of course is to build it up but what these guys have got unfortunately is they've got a brand deficit so they've come they've, they've acquired TDS has acquired a brand with a, a negative reputation it's, it's been significantly damaged over these last few years and it's it's blown away really the cleanliness of this place the the slick operation, the amount of investment in the machinery, in the staff, in the training, and in the kind of quality control. Um, Chris, who we've just been speaking to there, who's guided us around part of this tour, uh, he's got a hell of a job on his hands just to make sure that not only is he he and he's he and his team are responsible for making sure that all of anything that comes off the production line is 100% perfect in terms of uh, model accuracy, in terms of zero uh, scratches, damage. Uh, it, it needs to have a frame that's perfect, it needs to have an engine that's perfect and all of those other components too. Uh, otherwise that brand is just going to, you know, the deficit is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to come again. So I can kind of fully understand the amount of processes they have to go through to make sure that quality control is extreme. Uh, and even standing here over, over my shoulder, the customer quality perception audit, like we're in a world full of acronyms, but the old uh, CQPA department, um, of all of the 140 odd people that work here currently, they're all, they're all in it together. They've all been given an opportunity with this brand new brand, new brand or, the, or the sort of version 2.0 of this brand. And they're all, they're all in it and they want to make it successful. And, from a from a, a a motorcycling fan's perspective, you know, seeing a British brand going to this level of uh, attention to detail with this level of investment, they've got a hell of an opportunity to to come good. We we could be seeing the the, the, the beginnings of a, a a mega brand with uh, Norton, with the financial backing of TVS and with the the, the the management they have at the moment. Potentially, you know, they've got a great opportunity here. Here I am with Dr. Robert Henschel, who's the CEO of Norton Motorcycles. Robert, thank you so much for joining me. And thank, thank you. you for inviting us into your fantastic new facility here. Tell me, first of all, just so the uh, viewer can get to understand where your background is and to, and to know what you are uh, trying to achieve here with Norton. What is your background, please? My, my, my background, uh, I studied electrics electronics and I um, led engineering service provider organizations. So I've led 
uh, big organizations with engineers in. And at some point I also was responsible for motorcycle engineering and urban mobility at the company. And um, coming from that, um, I now have opportunity to, to build Norton into a new era. Yeah? And for me it's very important to build a sustainable Norton. Not, I'm not talking about EV at this, at this point in time, I'm talking about the financial sustainability of the company because Norton history was in some aspects bumpy. It was a, a roller coaster tour yeah? and uh, with the long-term investment of TVS, Norton now has the opportunity to get a sustainable company. Tell me about the, the process be, be behind you becoming involved in Norton. You obviously, you, you've spoken off camera slightly earlier about actually owning a Norton. You bought your own, didn't you, several years ago? Of course, uh, that was a long time before yeah. you got to work for Norton. So I visited Donington Castle, Donington Hall in 2016 and had opportunity to look at the 961 production line and I made a spontaneous decision to buy one yeah, because I found it uh, such a nice product and exciting product and a few weeks later I got the product in, into Germany and I still have it yeah. and it will also be maintained at some point in time here at the facility yeah. and um, I was always excited about um, uh, iconic British brands who also spent some time of my career at Lotus mm. yeah. So for me, um, I got a call short before Christmas last year and it took not long to make the decision to join. You were fully aware of what had happened over the previous 12 months, I take it? I'm previously aware of what, what happens the last 12 months. I was also aware of what happens the last years. Yeah. All of that uh, for me um, is an opportunity to build on. Yeah. And that is, for me, it's always the way has to be challenging and interesting, and that is for sure given. And you're now leading a team that has, I think, trebled in size, is that right, from, from the previous uh, incarnation of the, of the brand? And, and to sit here now and to see these facilities and, and to see the amount of uh, employees here that are dedicated to the cause, you've obviously been able to motivate them in, in such a way. How is that process, on your first day or before your first day at Norton, what, how, what, what were you thinking about uh, in terms of your priority, your priorities and TVS's priorities? Also first of all, when I came in, I've, I've not seen the facility similar to you mm -hmm. before I joined uh, the company. So I had to make a decision based on the history of Old Norton, based on the interviews I had with TVS and the management, and based on, at the end of the day, my gut feeling, my experience and my feeling. And I decided uh, to go for and then, the day I came in, um, the, the facility has already been established by, I would say, 80%. Yeah? I was super surprised on the level of quality in this, in, in this facility, on the investments having been done uh, by TVS. Yeah? And um, obviously it reflected from the beginning the approach I wanted to implement. A lean, a modern, a modern luxury um, um, motor motorcycle uh, brand with the most exciting um, uh, products to, to, um, uh, to start with. Yeah. So it's to take what had existed to a degree and make it better, more quality. And this is the objective. Exactly. It is not, I mean, the investments you see here are visible. There are so many things um, um, on going on in the background to really to make a sustainable company out of that. And um, as a heart, I would say one of the most um, important elements of being successful is the quality of the product. Yeah? If you demand high price for something, you have to, uh, you have to deliver high quality. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly um, what all uh, the facility is also uh, built around. It's about a uh, complete quality process, including um, supply chain. Yeah? And that is what is not visible immediately but it's so important for, for building the brand that we focus on high quality approach and, and, and also the mindset of people. There's obviously been a, Norton is a brand with an incredible history, uh, a real rich heritage all the way from the beginning of the 20th century um, through the racing successes of the 60s and 70s with the roller coaster of the last few years, the, the, the brand has been damaged somewhat. You're, you're almost starting it's a startup, isn't it, with a lot of heritage, but the brand quality, the brand uh, appearance to the outside world is, 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 in, is in sort of negative equity, essentially. Was that of concern or had you just, you saw a vision, you saw an opportunity to really put your stamp? When I face Norton customers, the majority of the outside and the Norton customers are super excited about the brand itself 
are very interested in um, the way we uh, want to go with Norton and I have so many positive feedback from the complete motorcycle market on this opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, um, there are some, uh, or we have customers um, who have uh, old Norton product, which where we need to fix um, some problems, yeah, because the, for example, V4SS is a non-rideable non um, uh, product we have in the market, and um, we look after the customers and provide um, a good solution. Yeah. That is kind of legacy we have to face. That is kind of legacy where we, um, we provide solutions, or we, we try to, to provide best solutions for all of us. Yeah. And at the same point in time, obviously, we are focusing, looking forward to create exciting products. Yeah. So it's a, it's a challenging time from different perspectives. But um, overall, um, I would say the brand is already perceived in a positive light. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's those people who, are, who have bought the SS or who have put a deposit down on the SS uh, previously. It's those people who are advocates of the brand, aren't they? So you, it's in your best intentions or best uh, ideas to make sure that they are happy first and foremost. Absolutely. So if, for all new products coming, we will first of all look after our deposit holders and also the, uh, the owners of a V4SS who are not um, or should not ride the bike. Yeah, that is um, clearly clearly our focus, and we have at the moment the situation that uh, Old Norton is still under liquidation, so we don't know the outcome of that process. Mm -hmm. We have no influence on that process, and I just want to make clear: it's not an excuse or something, but we do not have any liability to provide um, a solution, but it would be wrong not to do so because of the brand perception. Of course, of course. Yeah. So you've only been in your role, what, five months, five and a half months? It's, uh, it must have been a, quite a roller coaster for you already, a bit of a whirlwind um, to, with this facility here. Is it, was, it, was it this finished uh, when you joined the company? As mentioned, it was, everything was planned. Finishing level, war, level was at 80, 85%. And we did um, polishing, we did uh, finalizing things, and um, we are now in the situation where the handover of the complete facility is, um, come, is close. The attention to detail and the cleanliness uh, and the meticulous operation here has been, or is, uh, sensational. It's, uh, it's really first class. Um, when you open up the doors and you allow customers to see in here, you, you're clearly not afraid to show, uh, demonstrate uh, all of these, uh, everything that happens here. You must be very proud already uh, in the short time that you've been involved. As I said, a lot of either the TVS team and the management team in, in New Norton made an incredible job because you have to, you ha you ha we all know that Corona restricted us from working on site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that happened, um, the majority of time uh, with Corona in place and, um, and, and home office work, but the planning, the vis visibility of all the different stations we have in the facility, that was already planned. Um, I think what we have done in the last, um, in the last four or five months, the focus was very much on, uh, on professionalization of the organization, uh, in processes, in, um, in delivery of, of the engineering um, issues we had with the old bikes, we have with the old bikes, um, establishing um, of polishing supply chain, getting new supplier in place, all these, all these more invisible mm -hmm. elements. And in parallel, obviously, finalizing the, the, the planning and execution of the facility. And also being able to already come to market to a degree with the V4 SV. So you're already right. demonstrating a motorcycle that, uh, that will be built here in this, this area and uh, it will be a, a halo product, no doubt. But with the Kamado and with the uh, 650 twin cylinder engine bikes that we uh, from the outside world we're looking at or we're expecting are they still coming to fruition are we are we going to expect a, a commando run a, a 650 feet uh, uh, twin uh, coming soon also we have defined a 10-year product plan and this product plan is approved um, yes it's a business plan um, the financial aspect of the product plan is under um, finalization yeah it might so the product plan might change if that does not work but in general we have a clear idea uh, which product will, cam, uh, will, will come um, at which point in time. I can only say for the 961, we are investigating at the moment um, also to, to bring that bike back to the market, but we need to be sure that all our products are safe, that's clear, and um, have, um, have, uh, have a quality standard which reflects uh, reflecting the new Norton business. Yeah? We then have obviously an element of electrification in, yeah, it would be wrong not to look after electrification with all the changes in uh, legislation. So um, it will be, and I, that's, what, what, that's what I can tell at the moment on the product plan, it will be a mix of exciting products with ICE and EV. 
And you're obviously thinking globally here, you're owned by an Indian company. Are, are there any expectations for you to supply um, appropriately capacitated motorcycles, be they internal combustion engine or EV, to the Indian market or to the uh, growing markets? We are investigating, obviously, also to provide vehicles to the growing big capacity Asian market. Yeah? But um, all that has to be taken under consideration of the complete business plan. Because if you relaunch a brand, there's an element that you first of all um, have to strengthen your, your brand as a, as a core, and then you can think about uh, derived modules from there. Yeah? All of that is, is part of our, our product planning business plan investigations. I expect your desk is uh, covered in post-it notes with all sorts of ideas you can have for this brand. Actually, I don't, in fact, having seen the facility here, I expect it's very, very clean, your desk. But in terms of uh, opportunities, ideas, um, then you must be so excited by the, 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 the opportunity with the backing of TBS. They seem to operate very, very quickly with decision making and planning. Absolutely. And this was so amazing when I, before I joined, I had a product in mind something where I thought this is something, if I, if I get that job, I will do that, exactly that motorcycle. And, uh, but I'm not able to make a sketch because I'm an engineer. Yeah? So I asked my designer really to, um, to, to copy my brain. And it took him, honestly, six or eight hours and he came back with exactly the, the, the product I, I had in my mind. Yeah? And that is something where we also, you will also see new product segments, yeah? where we will create a lifestyle around and, um, and the focus is also to win younger customers for Norton Brand. Mm. You talked about modern luxury and creating um, um, uh, other opportunities. Does that include uh, some much smaller capacity machinery like uh, commuters, for example? I would not go so far that we talk about commuters, mm -hmm. but I would, um, especially EV, yeah, probably there are different categories of EV. Yeah? Probably you, we, don't, we will not only uh, talk, um, think about superbike mm -hmm. um, EV um, uh, things, but it will be a bunch of interesting products, mixture of e ICE and EV. And some of your background as well is in EV, isn't it, already? So you must come to, uh, you must have arrived with Norton with some, some uh, degree of understanding and, 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 and uh, creating opportunities with EV. Yes, and EV is not boring. EV is, um, uh, if you look at the automotive industry, there's meanwhile an acceptance for, for a, a huge acceptance for electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. And um, to drive them is quite exciting because you have torque from, from zero RPM. And that is something which will also be established in motorcycle industry. Um, and I, 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 I strongly recommend that Norton is part of that. Can we talk a little bit about the dealership network? We, uh, again, we talked a little bit earlier on about uh, the way in which the world is changing and uh, consumers are buying their motorcycles or, or, or cars. Do you feel as though in the next, maybe uh, I'm going to make a figure up here, two to five years perhaps, that that, that, that regular or traditional m method of buying a motorcycle, visiting a dealership, test riding the bike, going through the process one-to-one, -one, face to face, will, do you think that will change? Do you have any uh, vision uh, about Norton being involved in that uh, change? I think um, with the kind of approach we've taken in this facility, we have to create experience centers for customers. Customers have, I would like that customer experience the same, um, the same atmosphere you have in here and all our other places we will build globally. Yeah? And um, obviously we cannot build up experience center um, by 500 or more globally. Um, it will be something where we have to mix our, um, our approach to, um, to be close to customer. It's a mixture of, of um, customer experience, but also to provide a digital uh, backbone, so to say, to, to, to establish these processes. Yeah? I'm in general, um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of having um, direct contact to customer, mm -hmm. yeah? really to not dilute the brand value um, by some, some different levels of, of dealership. So in terms, of, in, in terms of customers, existing customers, new customers, potential fans, fans of British motorcycling, what, uh, what can we expect in the next steps? We've obviously seen some sketches and some artwork with the, and I've managed to see behind the scenes here with the, uh, the uh, V4SV. Um, clearly that's going to be the next production model, but what can, what can the fans expect over the next uh, six to 12 months? The next thing what, what I can announce is that for the Birmingham Motor Show, we will um, show a derivative of the V4SV. Yeah? 
I've not seen um, the uh, design model so far. So that's, that's uh, this week um, is a, a kind of printed model um, visible for me. But that's the plan, really, to have one derivative at the uh, Birmingham show. Mm -hmm. And to develop new vehicles, uh, motorcycles, takes two to three and a half years. Mm -hmm. That means, as a consequence, we have to um, we have to look at the opportunity to offer our existing products, like 961 or V4 or SV, as we already um, decided. Yeah, and that is a process where we need to finalize validation first before we can make an announcement. So 961 is also in in a, in a uh, investigation phase where we look at the quality, supply chain, and all the different elements of a motorcycle. <coughs> and um, that is what you can expect in the next. Um, in the next, I would say, one to two years. Robert, it would be remiss of me if I didn't talk about uh, racing. Norton has got a rich heritage, in, uh, certainly at the Isle of Man. Uh, we've seen bikes there racing even in the last few years. Um, what are your plans going forwards for returning to the, to the TT? A direct question. Um, I th not, racing is indeed uh, element of the DNA of Norton, no question. Yeah? I'm also responsible for the um, for the profitability of a company. So we need to balance that. It would, it is an easy answer. I would like to, I would like to win the Isle of Man TT. Yeah? No question about that. But it has to be aligned with the processes of the company and also the financial uh, milestones we have set because the shareholder at some point in, in time also expects a return of invest. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that is in, in the situation of um, balancing out. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously I answered your question. That's something which would help the brand again to grow. From a marketing perspective, seeing Absolutely. the brand at the TT well, and... It costs money, of course. Like that. And um, would be wrong to say no. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, best of luck. Thank you for showing us around. Thank you. Cheers. For a brand that's been around for 123 years, 2021 and beyond is seemingly the brightest chapter in Norton's illustrious history, uh, or the roller coaster of Norton so far. This incredible first-class facility here in Solihull has been a year in the making and the brand looks like it's heading in the right direction and will be going strength to strength. But we shall see, won't we, over the next 10 years with the likes of the SV and the 650s and the Commandos and into EV and possibly around the world into different markets. We wish Norton the very best. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed the trip. And if you've got any questions or queries or comments, leave them below. See you next time. <laughs>